Now that we've learned all our strums and all our chords, what we're going to do is combine the two ideas and start chopping and changing all over the place and see if we can come up with something that sounds a little bit different. A, a good song can sound good with a consistent strum all the way through. For example, you could play our animal song just with the classic strum only right the way through as we've been doing and it sounds okay. But what if we decided to try and add a little bit of tension and just make things a little bit different by changing the strums? Now the idea is, is we're not going to do anything flash or anything fancy, but we're going to really make the song sound better. So all we're going to do is change the strum depending on which bar we're on. So, as you can see on the screen and on the page, on the first bar of A minor, we're going to do the ballad strum. On the next bar, which is a C, we'll switch to the classic strum. On the next bar, D, we'll do the standard strum. And then on the F chord, we'll do the standard strum as well. Then it's back to A minor again, where we'll drop back to the ballad strum. Then on the C chord, we'll play the classic strum. And then on the E chord, we'll do two bars with the build-up strum, trying to build it up consistently right the way through those two bars. Not as easy as it sounds, and it takes a little bit of thought to change chords at the same time you're changing your strum, but it really will benefit from the change. What I'll do is I'll play it for you twice now. First time through I'll just do the classic strum, and then the second time through I'll switch to this new strumming, and see if you like the difference or not. You may or may not like it, but it does sound different, which is what we want. We want something a little bit outside the square. So I'll play it for you now. This is the Animals Ballad Song. Two, three, four. Hear how different it sounded there? just sounded interesting more than anything else. It was uh, an interest for the listener and it makes it interesting for you to play, which is a technique we try to get. Now that we can do that, let's just add something new to it as well. As you can see, there's a little sign there, a bit like a greater than sign. What that is called is an accent. What it means to do is just put a little bit more oomph into that particular beat of the bar that we're on. Generally, the accent will be found on the first beat of the bar. So if we were to play one bar of A minor using the classic strum and put an accent on the first beat, on that first beat we'd just put a little bit more of an extra oomph in there. So it would go one, two, three. Did you hear the accent okay there? It makes for, it's a natural accent, so it's quite natural to put it in there, but when you see it marked on, on a sheet of music or on paper, then you definitely put it in there like it says to do. Now, we've got the old animal song again. This time there's a couple of crescendos in there and also a few accents for you. I'll play it for you now, using the strums like we did last time with the different strums on each bar and also using the crescendos and the accents. One, two, three, four. Again, not too different than what we played earlier, but just trying to utilize the idea of the crescendos and the accents, which is a very good technique to learn how to do.